we hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the go, you know the you know the thing. That is the individual who the entire Democratic Party establishment is currently coalescing behind, all because they want to stop Bernie Sanders. He won South Carolina by a landslide, credit to him, and now that he has a little bit of momentum heading into Super Tuesday, the Democratic Party establishment collectively realizes that they may not have anyone else who can stop Bernie Sanders. So that's who they're choosing to coalesce behind. An individual who very clearly is struggling to form a coherent thought. And this is sad. Like, I stopped talking about Joe Biden's gaffes very early on or really emphasizing them because, you know, Joe Biden has always been a gaff prone politician. Everyone knows this. But seeing him early on, you know, throughout the course of the Democratic Party primary, this is sad. Like, I remember having a conversation with my friend Savage Joy on her podcast where I said, you know, this is something where Joe Biden's family needs to intervene and just say, listen, you had a great run. It's time to retire. Enjoy the time that you have with your grandchildren, because very clearly his cognitive functions are declining rapidly. And it's sad to watch. And look, I don't I don't want this to seem like I'm very opportunistically trying to focus on anything I can to bring down Joe Biden, because for the duration of this primary, I've been very hyper focused on policy on Joe Biden's history of wanting to cut Social Security, his militarism, right, his vote for the Iraq war. So I think that Bernie Sanders is such a strong candidate that I don't need to use Joe Biden's gaffes and cognitive decline to bring him down because we can win on the policy and the policy alone. However, let's be very serious. That individual who is struggling right now if he were to go up against Donald Trump, do you think that Donald Trump would be kind to Joe Biden? No, he would make fun of him for that. Do you think that Joe Biden, even if he were able to beat Donald Trump, which I think is unlikely, would be able to govern in a competent way? It would be very difficult. You'd basically have his advisors running the show because, again, cognitively speaking, he is in decline. I think that it's irresponsible for us to not admit that. And while we can't diagnose him... We're not doctors. We can just see. It's very obvious that he's struggling, and it's just sad. The Democratic Party is trying to prop him up and drag him across the finish line because they want to stop Bernie Sanders. But this is sad to watch. It's genuinely sad to watch. He's he's clearly struggling, and it's not like I'm just putting politics aside. It, it's hurtful to see this. And the reason why I say that is because this is very personal to me. I have a father who has dementia. And he's struggled with this for years. Sometimes it's something that's, you know, really quick and he gets over it. Like he forgets where he is and then he snaps out of it. Other times it's very serious to where he's driving in a car and he's screaming at the top of his lungs because he thinks that me, my brothers and my mom are trapped in the trunk and somebody wants to kill us. And he's hysterical. And even when he comes out of it and he realizes what's real and what isn't real, that trauma stays with him. And, you know, you, you see this gradual decline to where the person that you once knew is kind of fading. And it's just, it's really heartbreaking to watch because you don't know how to respond to it, right? Because you want to tell them that it's fake, but at the same time, what they're experiencing, you know, it feels really real when it comes to like a hallucination or forgetting something, basic things like the names of people, right? So this is personal to me, and I don't want to exploit it for political purposes, but we have to be realistic. We can't, ha like, how can you be the president if you are very clearly declining mentally? Now, again, I'm not diagnosing Joe Biden. I'm not saying that he has dementia, but just for me, coming from, you know, a, a family that has someone who's suffering from real cognitive decline, like, you see how it happens, and, you know, Everything that's there, it's just, it's really sad to watch. And people like Donald Trump, the Republicans, they're not going to be kind to him like Democrats and progressives are. They're going to weaponize this and they're going to make a case that the American people will see is, you know, if it's between Donald Trump and Joe Biden, who do you think can actually handle the office of the presidency? And it's not like, you know, Donald Trump isn't 
also losing his cognitive functions, but it's just a matter of who's worse. Now, I want to play a clip. This kind of goes over some of Joe Biden's gaffes, which I don't even think that you can call it gaffes at this point. But just within the last couple of weeks, he's made a ton of different gaffes. And this is this should genuinely worry the electorate. And I mean that earnestly. Like, you have to think about this. This is someone who you want to face off against Donald Trump. It could be a disaster. Take a look. Thank you. Thanks for your time. Please come back in less than 13 years, sir. All right, Chuck. Thank you very much. Uh, all right. Uh, it's Chris, I'm but Chris. anyway. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Look me over. If you like what you see, help out. If not, vote for the other by. I love this place. I love, look, what's not to like about Vermont in terms of the beauty of it? One of the things I'm proudest of is getting passed, getting moved, get, getting control of the Paris Climate Accord. I'm the guy that came back after meeting with Deng Xiaoping and making the case that I believe China would join if we put pressure on them. You had people like Margaret that uh, excuse me, you had p p people like the, the former chairman and leader of the party in, in Germany. Go to Joe 30330 and help me in this fight. Watch what happened when those kids from Parkland came up to see me when I was vice president. They went under the, and some, some of you covered it. So Biden tells this story or some version of it a lot. He says that, you know, he went on this military trip and it was dangerous, but he wanted to go anywhere. And he goes to the Konar province of Afghanistan and he hears about how this this man had climbed down into a ravine to rescue a fallen soldier. And he comes back up and he doesn't want to get this medal because he feels so heartbroken that his fellow comrade has fallen. That's about three different really heroic war stories all kind of pushed together into one anecdote. Joe Biden has made all sorts of statements about his activism in the civil rights movement. Now, in the beginning of his career, he made similar statements that he's making today on the campaign trail, and then he got caught lying. And for a huge chunk of his political career, he stopped telling those lies. This day, 30 years ago, Nelson Mandela walked out of prison and entered into discussions about apartheid. I had the great honor of meeting him. I had the great honor of being arrested with our UN ambassador on the streets of Soweto trying to get to see him on Robbins Island. The only African-American woman that had ever been elected to the United States Senate. A whole range of people. No, My point no, is, that's not true. true. The other that's one is true. here. <laughs> there's a, there's a, Play the radio, make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the now that video contains like some of the most um, clear examples of him kind of losing his train of thought and whatnot. But like just within the span of the past couple of weeks, uh, he called Chris Wallace Chuck. That's not as big of a deal, right? We all forget names. But I mean, he claimed he was running for the U.S. Senate. Okay, maybe he just misspoke. You know, he thought that he was in Vermont when he was in New Hampshire. Okay, he's traveling a lot. He's older, but that's a little bit more serious. And then we start getting into territory where he claims he was negotiating the Paris Climate Accord with Deng Xiaoping, who has been dead since 1997. That's when we're getting into serious territory. When he talks about being arrested in South Africa, protesting apartheid, that's more serious. So, I mean... Imagine him running in a general election and how Donald Trump would have a field day with him. Like, put aside the human, you know, emotions and, and the sadness that you feel for him because he's clearly declining. And think about the way that Donald Trump would weaponize this, right? Democrats, progressives haven't weaponized this as much against Joe Biden. We've pointed it out because how could you not? The media has talked about this. But imagine what Donald Trump could do in a general election to basically tell voters, look, who do you think is more qualified, this individual or me? And it's not like he's going to get Democrats to flip, but he'll just get undecided voters to stay home, which he knows will be conducive to a victory. And it's not like we even have to imagine how Donald Trump will use this because Trump's war room is already putting out videos and very cleverly weaponizing this in a way that I think is going to resonate with the broader electorate come November. Take a look at this attack video that wasn't created by Democrats, but cr created by the Republicans and what they're doing to convince you that Joe Biden isn't qualified to be president any longer.
President Obama reportedly told Joe Biden directly, quote, you don't have to do this, Joe. You really don't. That is not a joke. That is a natural fact. I think Biden looked unsteady at many points. Play the radio. Make sure the television, the, excuse me, make sure you have the record player on at night. The, the, the phone. He's not the most polished speaker anymore. The president thinks, uh, my friend from Vermont thinks that. Watching his long, winding answers that don't really make sense in recent debates has also raised the question as to whether that has gotten worse and whether he is up for this. The fact is that the bills that the president, that, excuse me, the future president here. Because there's a lot of people who are concerned about uh, Joe Biden's ability to carry the ball all the way across the end line without fumbling. Go to Joe 30330. He looked kind of unsteady and almost deer in the headlights. So what are we doing? What's going on right now? He's not that good at this. I mean, he's clearly not that strong a candidate, thinking on his feet. Anyway, my time's up. I'm sorry. I think there are some concerns, and they've been, man they've been expressed by Democrats themselves. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Over whether Joe Biden is equipped to withstand a very grueling campaign. We choose truth over facts. Joe Biden was really shaky, both because he was stumbling through his answers. I'm the vice president of the United States. And also because the substance of those answers hasn't really gotten better. Those details are irrelevant. I think we're going to see growing questions, wondering if he has the mental and physical stamina to get through this campaign. I love this place. I love, look, what's not to like about Vermont in terms of the beauty of it? And what a neat town. Obama warned Biden's aides to make sure Biden didn't embarrass himself. Imagine what would have happened if, God forbid, Barack Obama had been assassinated. Real conversation that is happening among Democrats. Has he lost a step? Uh, is, he, is he too shaky? I want to be clear. I'm not going nuts. There are definitely moments where you listen to Joe Biden and you just wonder. Now, the reason why I think that an advertisement like that is going to resonate is because it's not Donald Trump, you know, um, making fun of Joe Biden. They're just playing clips of Joe Biden speaking. They're playing clips of pundits on CNN and MSNBC, not Fox News, but CNN and MSNBC. Because if Donald Trump were to just play clips from Fox News of, you know, Sean Hannity attacking Joe Biden because cognitively speaking, you know, he's declining – then if you're a Democratic Party voter or an independent, you're just going to see that and think, well, yeah, you know, Fox News, they're going to attack Joe Biden. But people who actually have credibility, CNN, MSNBC, sadly they do, they're going to see that. And they're going to realize, man, maybe I can't vote for Joe Biden. I don't like Donald Trump. But clearly Joe Biden isn't capable of governing because there's, there's something seriously going on there. And again, you can't diagnose Joe Biden. Nobody knows. Um, maybe he doesn't have anything serious going on. Maybe, you know, it's senility. I don't know what the answer is, but one thing that's obvious and will be obvious to voters is that his cognitive capabilities are declining and declining fast. Like if you just look at videos from five years ago, you see it and maybe he's just tired. Maybe we're reading too much into this, but this is a liability in a general election. And to me, it's sad. It's just so sad to see that. Democrats are so hellbent on stopping Bernie Sanders that they're trying to prop up someone who shouldn't be doing this, who should be at home with his grandchildren. I mean, I'm not sure what to say, but we're all on the Titanic and there's an iceberg named Donald Trump dead ahead and we are on a collision course headed straight towards it, and we're all going to go down with this ship, all because the captains on this ship, the people in charge, don't want Bernie Sanders to take control, to steer us away from that iceberg. It's just, look, we have to win a majority. We'll just put it that way. We have to win a majority because the Democratic Party will stop at nothing. If they could choose between Bernie Sanders and a Republican to be the nominee. They would, because this isn't about policy. This isn't about political ideology or party affiliation. This is about them maintaining their power. The consultant class who gets paid millions of dollars each year to advise them, 
the people in Congress who are raising money through special interests who don't want Bernie Sanders to stop that gravy train. This is about maintaining the status quo. So you've got to understand that to the Democratic Party establishment, having Trump get reelected is preferable to, to Bernie Sanders being the nominee and president. That's what we're seeing. And there's an article from the New York Times that interviewed almost 100, I want to say, if not 100 superdelegates, where they said, look, they're willing to demolish the party to stop Bernie Sanders. So what you're seeing is the Democratic Party establishment all coalesce behind someone who very clearly is struggling to keep it together. And I don't mean that in you know a, a cynical way, even though this is all political, of course, but I mean that in like just the human sense that this is sad. He shouldn't be doing this. And Obama did try to warn him, you know, prior to this uh, primary. But he didn't listen because like you don't want to admit that you are kind of losing it, for lack of a better word. Like that's with my dad. He doesn't want to admit that he has these issues and he laughs off, you know, these little um times when he forgets something or hallucinates and he still has this in his mind that he wants to he wants to restart his business that he had back in the 90s and you have to like intervene explain to them what's possible and what's real and like for me I see that and they need somebody needs to do that with Joe Biden like his wife or his children need to sit him down and tell him no they like they should have done this before the primary but now we see that this is probably going to come down to Bernie Sanders versus Joe Biden, and he's a real credible threat against Bernie. He can win the nomination. And it's like a disaster unfolding. But, you know, anything to stop Bernie Sanders. So this is genu genuinely sad. I don't think that Joe Biden would be Donald Trump because Donald Trump has a very, I think, credible case to make against Joe Biden that he he's not capable of governing, Right. And again, it's sad. It's sad that this is what it's come down to, where this should even be pointed out. But at what point does it become irresponsible for us to not talk about this, to not mention what's obvious, what everyone can see, right? It's not conspiratorial to say that Joe Biden is having a difficult time thinking, obviously, and articulating himself. It's not conspiratorial to do that. It, it I don't even think it's immoral. It feels gross to talk about this, you know, because everything is political, and, you know, I'm an opponent politically to Joe Biden. But at the same time, I mean, what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do in this situation? The man could be the Democratic Party nominee. And, yeah, we'll just leave that there. I feel bad for Joe Biden, though. I will say that. I genuinely feel bad for him. And, like, throughout the primary, I try to, like, not feel bad for him because just objectively speaking his policies are terrible like he does not care about the working class he has a horrible record so it's like i put that aside and my anger usually prevails but it's to the point where you just see it like week after week there's something new with him being arrested in apartheid and forgetting this or that and you just can't not have that human reaction and just feel really bad for him and i'm sure the democrats feel bad too but they don't they don't care. Like, the number one goal, again, is to defeat Bernie. So, yeah.